Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to give a shout out to Hassan Campbell. Um, Y'all know he was, um, he was hit um, over the weekend, I believe, a few days ago. However, um, not everybody uh, feels that, you know, Hassan is clout chasing and that he would clout chase um, his own uh, attempted execution. Um, and I, I just feel that culturally we're just so um, out of touch with reality that it makes it real difficult that a lot of us can't even um, fathom something as serious as this without making a joke behind it. So I just wanted to send my prayers up, and I'm glad you're okay, Hassan. It's not like I um, follow your content, uh, but I've seen you a couple times, and a lot of people say that you're a clout chaser and things of that nature. You know, I don't care what they think you are. You know who you are, but the fact is, whoever you are, I don't believe you deserve to be shot. Okay, and um, and that's just how dysfunctional the black community and other communities are. But I really speak on black communities because we don't believe in mental health. We don't believe that most of us are damaged, um, damaged by our parents, damaged by our grandparents, damaged. We're enmeshed. And as soon as you understand that, it becomes such a beautiful life. Um and you can accept people like Hassan and what he does without being like a, a crabs in a bar barrel mentality. A lot of people are hating on him um, because he has a successful YouTube channel. Um, and um, because he spoke out on his uh, graping by... Um, you know, uh, I can't think of it. Got uh, Africa Bombada. A lot of y'all feel like you can discredit him. <sighs> However, um, as far as I'm concerned, that's not the case. Now, with that being said, I'm not gonna stay on here. What about Hassan? I just wanted to make sure I sent a shout out to him to let him know that um, some of us are, are praying for you. Also, um, Kelly and Desiree, um, both of your emails kind of pretty much was coming from the same vein. So I feel like I'm going to answer you um, as I can. Um, and I want to... Especially uh, Desiree, because this is your first time, as you stated in your email, um, being estranged from your family. And you want it this way, but they have a hard time of accepting uh, the decisions and the independence from you and not, being, not wanting to be a part of their enmeshment and their mental illness anymore. Their toxicity, should I say. So... One thing, you know, you, we need to understand that when you're dealing with people, especially, like I said, it's a, in, in, a cult, in certain cultures, and I'm going to just speak f freely from the black um, American experience. I'm going to speak from that experience. I'm not going to um, rely on some of my other experiences, you know, in Islam, and I'm just going to rely on exactly what goes on in the uh, back black community how they feel about holidays how they feel about church and how they feel that you owe them something when you decide that you don't want to be involved with their dysfunction their toxic um psychotic behavior you know um like i said i didn't come from heaven i fell from hell like the rest of y'all so 
I experienced this myself in my own family. I have family members who think that we owe them something. I have family members who, in fact, that start a conversation with you, calling you names, and think, <laughs> and think they're going to be very successful in, in talking to you. I mean, it, and they don't even understand, and it's just, it's been normalized that they can call you names and expect for you to still want to have a conversation with them, okay? The, when your relationship is fact fractured and when people don't know boundaries, it's a serious issue. They come to your house without being uh, invited. They come knock on your door. Even during the pandemic, they'll come and knock on your door and, and, and act as if this is an enmeshed situation and like it's a mobile and one person can't move without the other. I was talking to my brother last night. And I was uh, talking to him about um, just some of the things that we were experiencing from some other family members. And, you know, I hate to talk to him about it because, you know, he's from the mindset, well, don't, you know, why would you ever speak to people like that again? Why would you ever speak to them? Especially when they got generation after generation after generation of dysfunction and you put up with it. Um, and But... Everything becomes about them, what they want, uh, what they feel their desires are. They, you know, uh, and they get and they get very angry and think somebody is doing something to them because you have set clear and concise boundaries for their behavior. See, with these people, you have to cut them off at the arms. You have to let them know we could. You know, what draws men together is their ideology, not necessarily their blood. And it, and that's one thing that the black community has very, very um, dysfunctional I ideas about. They feel like because you're their family members that you got to put up with them. And this is what Desiree is talking about. She doesn't, she's separating herself. She doesn't want to be bothered with people that will call the police on her, people that will come and steal out of her house, uh, people that would just uh, cause drama in fact and because you don't adhere or co-sign their craziness then they plant the whole situation on you and they go and spread lies and uh to the other members of the family and so when you get enough of that you shut it down you have to, if you respect yourself and if you love yourself, you don't have to put up with that kind of craziness. And the holidays makes it very difficult. I understand that. So, Desiree, you can continue to reach out to me, and I will continue to give you as much information as I possibly can have. Because one thing about being involved with and coming from a dysfunctional family, you got to realize that they don't even realize they're doing anything wrong. When they talk to you and they're being aggressive, when they're being ignorant, they actually feel like they have a right. Um, they're caught up in things that don't mean anything to you. It's, just, it's like that... Um, it's like a scripture um, that Jesus said, listen, woman, behold your son, and son, behold your mother. It's like two wounds, growing, two individuals growing up in the same womb. At some point, you have to shed that. Families are not supposed, a healthy family is not enmeshed like that. A healthy family does not think that they can call people names and still think that they're going to come to the barbecue. <laughs> Or that they even want to be around you. So when you have people that don't know how to have a conversation. Who may have been, for whatever reason. Um, not very, not the most articulate or the brightest bub on the tree. Um, and then they put themselves in a situation where they don't really know enough. But they try to attack you or tell you what to do. Those are the kind of people you got to cut off. And that's my gauge. My gauge is. How well are you educated? How well do you know about healing? How 
much do you understand about family dynamics and family dysfunction? And if you don't, if I check out all the boxes and none of them are, are even in your forethought, that's a person that I don't really want to spend any time with. That's the person my brother said I won't spend any time with. You know, and he's absolutely correct. Because once you, the older you get, the more you value your peace. And you don't let people that are dramatic, dysfunctional, toxic, you don't let them disturb your peace under any circumstance. So Desiree, if you feel comfortable, I'm going to be making a few videos today so you can always hang out with me. If I had this live stream hooked up, uh, and who knows, I might by later. But if I do, maybe we can chat that way. But you always are still free to email me and, um, you know, see what we can get going. Okay? Now, lastly, so I hope that you don't take this too, um, too, too, too much to heart and that they don't steal your joy because that's what they do. They make everything about them and they want you to do what they want you to do. Not opposes what's best for you or what's best for your family. They want, and anything that's not what they want, they consider it you being mistreating them or you being spiteful or hateful or any of those things. People like that don't waste your time with. Because first of all, they don't know enough. And you don't have, I know I don't, don't have time to teach them. That's something they should have learned in school. And obviously they didn't. And they didn't try to get any therapy on their own. People that abuse their family members, you know, um, I, I don't have time for that. You know, this is why I hope this uh, Puffy go get up under the jail. Um, because obviously he comes from a dysfunctional family with a dysfunctional mother. And he takes it out on the women in his life. Time out for that. And time out for that ignorance. You don't have to put up with that. Okay? You just really don't. So I just want to make sure I make that clear, and I wanted to address you, Desiree, because I know it is what people call the Thanksgiving, and they get all crazy. And that, First of all, I don't even celebrate it for that reason alone. The black people don't even know what they celebrate, and they just celebrate. <laughs> they just celebrate. They have no idea, and then they fat asses eat, and then they eat so much till they get sick, and... It's not just about being involved with a uh, a lovely, healthy environment. None of those things are it. So you do what you have to do to protect your mental health. And don't let nobody steal it and rob your joy. Let them stay where they are. And you, God bless them. But you don't have really anything to offer them. And that's how you have to live your life. Because enmeshment is... A very unhealthy way to live. So with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share the video. And for the rest of you who are having a hard time this Thanksgiving, don't worry about it. Don't even sweat it. Don't sweat it. You don't have to go any place where you feel uncomfortable. Don't go anywhere where you feel unwelcome. And certainly don't go anywhere where people have been torturing you for two and three generations. That has got to stop. And if you have to be the one to stop it, you do it. Don't even worry about the rest of them. You just be the one. You be the captain of your ship. So with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you in the next video.